All right, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. These are our disclosures. Abdominal wall hernias are one of the most challenging and common problems faced by general surgeons in the United States today. More than $3 billion, hernia, or more than $3 billion are spent on abdominal wall ventral hernias and nearly 350,000 repairs are performed annually. However, management practices in ventral hernia repair vary widely and nationwide epidemiological data is scant. In recent years, a number of surgeons have moved to performing ventral or incisional hernia repairs robotically. However, one persistent critique of utilizing a robotic approach in nearly any kind of surgery is the cost. With rising healthcare costs in surgery, this asks the question, are we increasing costs without necessarily improving outcomes? So the aims of this study were twofold. The first was to compare the costs of robotic to laparoscopic ventral hernia repair. These included total cost, as well as technical direct costs from functional areas in the hospital, such as the operating room, laboratory, pharmacy, and radiology. The second set of aims was to compare clinical outcomes of robotic versus laparoscopic ventral hernia repair. These included operative time, length of stay, 30-day readmissions, need for reoperation, surgical site occurrences, and mortality. So we performed a retrospective review of patients undergoing robotic or laparoscopic ventral hernia repair at our institution from January 2016 to July 2017. Um, laparoscopic repairs were performed by first doing anesthesiolysis if necessary, primary defect closure, implantation of a barrier-coated mesh with five centimeters of overlap, and fixation with permanent tacks. Robotic repairs were performed by placing mesh preperitoneally or in the retrorector space with or without a component separation. Cost data was in, obtained from our institution's billing department. This cost data also included cost association, costs associated with the acquisition of the robot itself, maintenance, repair, and sterilization, as well as depreciation. Professional wages for the operating room staff were included in our calculations, but not for physicians such as the surgeon performing the procedure or the attending anesthesiologist. Clinical data was obtained from the America's Hernia Society Quality Collaborative, or the AHSQC. <clears throat> so these are our results. A total of 93 patients were included in the study, 47 patients who underwent laparoscopic ventral hernia repair, and 46 patients who underwent robotic ventral hernia repair. As you can see, age was statistically significantly different between groups. The laparoscopic patients were older, with a mean age of about 62 years compared to 55 years in the robotic group. Gender was equally distributed. BMI, functional status, and ASA class were all similar between the two groups. There is a higher incidence of diabetes in the laparoscopic group, and this was statistically significantly different. Looking at hernia and operative characteristics, most of the hernias repaired in this study were incisional hernias. Hernia size was statistically significantly different between groups. In the robotic group, it was 44 and a half centimeters squared was the median size compared to 24 in the laparoscopic group. Um, about a quarter of the hernias included in this study were recurrent hernias, and there was no statistically significant difference in wound status. This is a table depicting clinical outcomes of the study. Um, unsurprisingly, the robotic procedures were associated with a statistically, significant lo statistically significantly longer operative time. The mean operative time for the laparoscopic cases was 153 minutes compared to 281 minutes for the robotic group. There were 10 surgical site occurrences in the study. Most of these were seromas, and they were not statistically significantly different between groups. Length of stay was about two days for both groups. And in the study, there was no mortality, 30-day readmissions, reoperation, or recurrences. This table depicts total costs for both groups. So the mean total cost in the laparoscopic group was $5,752. Compared to the robotic group, that mean was $4,900. Um, as you can see from the table, these differences were not statistically significantly different when you adjust for both hernia size and prior hernia repairs and age as well. So what's driving these costs? As you can see from this bar graph, the functional areas that are driving this cost include the OR far and away, as well as to a lesser, dis lesser extent, pharmacy and room and board. The remaining functional areas, such as respiratory therapy, radiology, and the ICU, make up a small fraction of total costs. Um, this is a busy table, but this breaks down functional area costs in more detail. 
As you can see again, the primary driver of total costs in this study was from the operating room. The mean OR costs from the laparoscopic group was $4,700 compared to $3,400 in the robotic group. And these differences are statistically significant on univariate and multivariable analysis. Laboratory costs were also statistically significantly different, 40 compared to $90 in the laparoscopic and robotic groups respectively. However, for the remaining functional areas such as room and board, radiology, cardiology, costs were roughly similar. So what's driving the OR costs? The most expensive items we found in the laparoscopic group were the barrier-coated meshes. To a lesser, dis to a lesser degree, uh, there's contribution from disposable tackers and trocars. From the robotic side, the robotic instruments far and away were the main drivers of cost, um, costing as much as $240 per use. Um, uncoated meshes and robotic disposables such as trocars and drapes also contribute. The parity b achieved between the robotic and laparoscopic ventral hernia repair costs in our study can be partially explained by some cost containment strategies. Um, some of them include avoiding the use of barrier-coated mesh or other more costly meshes in the robotic side avoiding the use of disposable tackers, and trying to minimize the number of robotic instruments you use to three instruments only. So in summary, clinical outcomes were similar between the laparoscopic and robotic repair patients. Operative time was statistically significantly longer in the robotic group. Costs were similar between the groups, and for the majority of patients, the bulk of the costs came from three functional areas, the operating room, room and board, and pharmacy. Um, we accept that there are many limitations to our study. The first is selection bias, as you can see from the difference in preoperative demographics in the patients. Um, the cases represented in the study were performed by a single surgeon, and the study is retrospective in nature with small cases and lack of long-term follow-up. And finally, and very importantly, hospital costs in the US may vary significantly from one geographic region to the next. In conclusion, performing ventral hernia repairs robotically may provide outcomes that are similar at similar cost when compared to performing ventral hernias laparoscopically. Thank you, and I'll be happy to take any questions.